Thanks very much, Brother Maxime. No problem, sir. One bit of Brooklyn. Okay, I'll come here. All right. Oh. All right, so we're going to know what I'm sorry. Oh, we're going to know what I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to know what I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Oh. Okay, we're going to begin at this time by going to God in prayer. Father in heaven, I pray a blessing upon the students. I pray a blessing upon myself. May you give us an understanding mind that we can grasp any new idea that will be taught today. We pray that you'll help us to apply what we learn in our efforts to share the gospel with others. We pray that you may also give us an understanding heart that we can use our communication skills to build up the body of Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, sir. Just a quick review of last week's lesson before we move on to part two of parts of speech. Yes. Last week, we looked at nouns, pronouns, and verbs. Nouns or pronouns may be used as the subject of a sentence. The subject noun or pronoun is a person, place, or thing that is spoken of or written about. For example, the preacher, that is the noun. The noun is any word that gives a name to a person, a place, a thing, or an idea. The pronoun may be used in place of a noun. So in a sentence, the preacher preaches, and this, this is what he said. He is a pronoun 
that is pointing back to the known preacher. So instead of saying um, the preacher preaches and this is what the preacher said, you can use the, now, the pronoun he in place of the known preacher. So a pronoun is used in place of a noun so that there is no need to use the noun again and again and again. The verb is the word that tells what the subject does or is. For example, preaches. A group of words is not a sentence unless it contains both a subject and a verb. Okay, I'm in the process of changing the screen. Okay, now, last week at the end of our lesson, we looked at this exercise. And so I'm going to be just using it as a means of reviewing last week's lesson. Last week's lesson is um, noun, pronoun, and verb three parts of speech. So number one, God loved. God is a noun and which is the subject of the sentence and loved is a verb. Number two, Jesus died. Jesus is the noun and the subject of this sentence and died is the verb. Three, Jesus arose. Jesus is the noun and a rose is the verb. Jesus is the subject of the sentence. Number four, Jesus saves. Jesus is the noun and the verb is saves. Jesus is the subject of this sentence. Number five, God forgives. God is a noun and is this. he is the subject of this sentence. Forgives is the verb. Six, you believe. You is the pronoun used in place of whatever noun is, is there, and believe is the verb. You is a pronoun and is the subject of this sentence. The same is true with the other sentences. You, 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 and you. They're all pronouns. <coughs> Sorry. They're all pronouns and they form the subject of the sentence. And the next word is a verb, repent, confess, are baptized, are saved. They're all verbs that express some action. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so that is what we studied last week. Now, are there any questions that remain for lesson one? Any question about a noun? A pronoun or a verb? Okay. Okay, before I go any further, is Solomon is Solomon there on the online platform? I don't think she is right here at, at this moment. I don't know for what reason. Okay. That's fine. Is Medelus here? Yes. Medellin is here. All right. Pear. What about Pear? Is Pear here? here? Do you see Pear? All right. The only person I can see right now on the screen is Enrico. That's why I'm asking. All right. So let me just mark those that are here as present. So is, is Pear here? I don't know if the answer was given. Uh, Medelus, do you see Pear there? Hello? Yes, do you, do you see Pear? Pear? Yes. Uh, I see, I see the screen. All right, let me give you the full name. I'm coming. Do you see Fredolin Pierre? Oh, that's another student. 
Yeah, Fridolin Peer is another Haitian student. I know a similar. You don't see him, okay. All right, let us move on to lesson number two. We will look at parts of speech, part two. General objectives of this lesson are, one, to define the direct object of a verb. Two, to identify the relationship between the subject and the direct object of a verb. Three, to identify what questions to ask the verb in order to find the direct object of a verb. Four, to define an adjective. Five, to identify the relationship between a noun and an adjective. Six, to define an adverb. Seven, to identify the relationship between a verb and an adverb. The specific objectives for this lesson are, one, at oh, the sir. end of the lesson. Wait there for a minute. I can't see the slide. Oh, you can't see it. All right, um, let me try again. All right, I'm gonna share the screen from the beginning. Okay, can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. All right. So the general objectives, let me start again with the general objectives for lesson number two, which is dealing with direct object, adjective, and adverb. Number one, to define the direct object of a verb. Number two, to identify the relationship between the subject and the direct object of a verb. Three, to identify what questions to ask the verb in order to find the direct object of a verb. Four, to define an adjective. Five, to identify the relationship between a noun and an adjective. Six, to define an adverb. Seven, to identify the relationship between a verb and an adverb. The specific objectives for this lesson are, one, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to explain what a direct object of a verb is. Tell me, um, before I go further, is this, being, is this being recorded on YouTube Live? Um, I don't know, but it's, it's been recorded. Yeah, no, it's, it's being recorded on the Zoom. Do, do you know how to put it on YouTube Live? Uh, uh, no, sir. Um, Maxine is going to do that. Give him a look. All right. Number one, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to explain what a direct object of a verb is. Two, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to point out what is the relationship between the subject and the direct object. Three, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to explore two ways of finding out the direct object. Four, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to discuss three examples of the direct object. Five, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to explain what an adjective is. Six, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to point out what is the relationship between an adjective and a noun. Seven, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to discuss three examples of an adjective. Eight, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to explain what an adverb is. Nine, at the end of this lesson, 
the students should be able to point out the relationship between an adverb and a verb. 10, at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to discuss three examples of how an adverb may be used. Now let us look at the direct object of a verb. In the last lesson, we looked at nouns, pronouns, and verbs. We're now looking at the direct object of a verb. We're looking at um, adjectives and we're looking at adverbs. Number one, a noun or a pronoun are two parts of speech that may be used as the direct object of a verb. So a direct object of a verb can either be a noun or a pronoun. So we have, we have learned two things about the nouns and the pronouns. They can be used according to last week's lesson as the subject of a sentence. And today we are learning that a noun or a pronoun may be used as the direct object of a verb. Now, first of all, let us find out what is the direct object and how do we find it? The direct object and the subject of a sentence are related for it shows what the subject is doing. For example, the preacher preaches the gospel. The gospel tells what the preacher preaches. He is preaching the gospel. Okay, so here is the relationship between the subject, which is the which is he, and the direct object. The direct object tells you what the subject is doing. Um, it tells you what he is doing. He is preaching the gospel. Now, how do we find the direct object? The direct object will be found by asking the verb either what or whom. For example, what is the preacher preaching? The answer to this question gives the direct object of the verb. The answer is the gospel. The example is, whom is the preacher preaching? The answer to this question gives the direct object of the verb. The answer is Christ in the sentence, the preacher preaches Christ. Okay, so when you are referring to something that is being preached, in this case, the gospel, um, you would ask the question, what is the preacher preaching? When you're dealing with the person whom the preacher is preaching, such as Christ, you would use, okay, so that is how you identify the direct object. So we have seen, number one, a noun or a pronoun may form the direct object of a verb. Two, we have seen that the direct object is related to the subject of the sentence in that it shows what the subject is doing. What is he preaching? The gospel. This is the direct object of the verb is preaching. It tells you what the subject he is doing. And then how do we find the direct object? We can ask the verb, which in this case is preaching. What is he preaching? And the answer is the gospel. If he's preaching Christ, we may ask another question of the verb. Whom is he preaching? And the answer is Christ. The preacher preaches Christ. Now let us do a little exercise here. So I'm going to start with en Enrico. I'd like you to, to answer the question for this number one here. It says the preacher preaches the gospel. And I would like you to answer this question. What is the preacher preaching? Preacher. It's preaching 
Uh, yeah, what, what is the preacher preaching? What is the preacher preaching? Yeah, he's preaching the gospel. Correct. So if we're going to find out the direct object of the verb, we need to ask the verb, whatever verb it is in a sentence, the question, what? What is the subject doing? Now, since the subject of this sentence is preacher, I've used the word preacher, but it may be some other noun. What is the noun doing? What is the preacher preaching? And the answer to that question gives you the direct object of the verb, whatever the verb is. In this case, it is gospel. He is preaching the gospel. Now, let me go to um, Medelus. Okay, I'm ready. The preacher preaches Christ. So, whom is the preacher preaching? Medelus? The preacher is preaching Christ. Okay, so the answer in this is sentence Christ. is Christ. And Christ then is the direct object of the verb preaches. So when it is something that is preached, you ask what? When it is someone who is being preached, you ask whom? And the answer to the questions will give you the direct object of the verb in the sentence. Let me go back to Enrico. Here is the sentence, God loved the world. So my question to you is, whom did God love? The world. That is correct, the world. And so world is the direct object of the world loved. And I now go to Medelus. God gave his son. And so the question to you is, whom did God give? The son. He gave his son. So we find that son is the direct object, or his son is the direct object of the verb gave. Back to Enrico, the sentence is, God sent his son. So I ask you, whom did God send? His son. His son. So his son is the direct object of the verb sent. Back to Medelus. The apostles healed the sick. So the question to Medelus is, whom did the apostles heal? The sick. The sick. So the sick is the direct object of the verb healed. Back to Enrico. Saul persecuted the church. So my question to you, Enrico, is whom did Saul persecute? The church. The church. So the church is the direct object of the verb persecuted. Medelus. Number eight, Saul saw Jesus. So the question to you is, whom did Saul see? Jesus. That is correct. Jesus then is the direct object of the verb Saul. Enrico, number nine, Saul heard Jesus. So the question to you is, whom did Saul hear? Jesus. That's correct. So Jesus is the direct object of the verb heard. Notice that in each of the sentences, you may ask the verb the question, either what, if it is something that is being done, or whom, if it is a person that is being um, spoken about. And it will give you the direct object of the verb. So simply put, you may find the direct object in, in a sentence by asking the verb either what is the subject doing or whom is the subject speaking about and you will get the answer. The, the, whatever the answer is shows you the direct object of the verb 
in that sentence. Any question on how to find the direct object of a verb? Not from me, so no, no question from me. Okay, anyone? All right, let us move on to the next screen. We're now looking at adjectives. We looked at the direct object, which may be either a noun or a pronoun. We're now looking at adjectives. Number one, an adjective describes a noun. Number two, here are examples of how an adjective describes a noun. The genuine preacher. Notice that genuine describes preacher by showing what kind of person the preacher is. The preacher is not a hypocrite, but he is a sincere person who is following the teachings of Jesus Christ from his heart. So genuine is the adjective, preacher is the noun. And notice that the adjective goes before the noun. It doesn't come after the noun in the English language. It comes before the noun. So it tells you what kind of person the noun is, the genuine. Number two, another example, the holy scriptures. Notice that holy describes scriptures. The scriptures are holy because they were spoken by God through the Holy Spirit, the men of God who wrote down what he said. These scriptures are set apart from all other writings. Here's a third example of an adjective. The true God. Notice that true describes God. All other gods and goddesses are false. True means that the God who has revealed himself in the Holy Scriptures is the real God. So an adjective describes a noun. It comes before a noun and it gives us more information about the person. And if I'm talking about a place, it will give more information about a place. If I'm talking about a thing, it will give more ideas about a thing. So it describes a person, a place, or a thing. It describes a noun. Any question on adjectives? Anyone? No, sir. Okay, let us move on. We're now looking at adverbs. An adverb describes a verb. For example, the preacher preaches the gospel effectively. Effectively describes preaches the verb by showing how the preacher preaches. Another example of the use of the adverb is the preacher preaches the gospel today. Today describes preaches the verb by showing when the preacher preaches. A third example of the use of an adverb is the preacher drove the car easterly. Easterly describes drove the verb by showing where the preacher drove. So, effectively, is dealing with how the action is done. Today is describing when the action was done, and easterly describes where the action is, is being done. Okay, so you have different kinds of adverbs. Adverbs that show how something is done, when something is done, and where something is done. So an adverb 
adds more information about the verb, just like an adjective adds more information about the verb. Any question? I have a question. Hello? Yes. I want to know how many kinds of adverbs are out there. Okay. Well, the first one, you may call it an adverb of manner. Manner meaning how something is done. This is an adverb of time that tells you when something is done. This is an adverb of direction that tells you in which direction something is being done. Um, um, these are what I, I remember. These are the basic uses of adverb. Um, the, the manner in which something is done, mm -hmm. the time when something is done, and the direction or the place where something is done. Okay, I understand. Yes. Okay. Now, what I want you to do at this time, let me see the time. What I want you to do, you can you can write it down on paper. Um, I want you to put in capital letters the direct object in these sentences in the first paragraph. Then in the second paragraph, I want you to put in bold print, that is, you can make the print dark, um, the adjective in these sentences. And then in the third and last paragraph, I want you to put the adverb in italics. That is, you can make the letters lean like what you have in the word italics. Um, if you don't finish it now, you can finish it for homework. But let us see how far you can get. If you're having difficulty, you can let me know. But you can go ahead and take out your notebook. And I want you to do this exercise, paragraph by paragraph. Any question about the classwork? About the exercise, right? Um, repeat what you said again. You said we, we're supposed to... Yes, I want you to do these exercises now during our class. Oh, all of them? Yeah, all of them. If you don't get to finish them in class, then you can finish it up in homework. Okay. But I want you to start now. And if you have any difficulty, then let me know. Okay. okay, so you can begin now in your notebook. Hello? Yes, Mendeluz. Uh, so I'm asking, uh, if we don't need to do it on computer. If you want to do it on the computer, you are free to do it. If you want to do it by writing it on paper in your notebook, you, you can also do it that way. Okay, all right. Yes.
Enrico, which paragraph are you in now? Um, you know, I did make a mistake, so I did have to start, but um, because you never look like you never look presentable, you know. So I did have to start, but but when you said uh, put in capital letter, put in bold, and put in adjective, right? Um, italics. That last paragraph I think, with, with I the adverb in uh, italics. Ah, uh, I'm not really seeing much mistake. I don't know. Or, uh, okay. All right. Um, I'm going to be sending you this PowerPoint, so you'll have it in your PowerPoint. Okay. Whatever you have not done, you can finish it for homework. But I'm going to end the class now. So um, still save what you have done. Uh, if you're working on the computer now, save what you have done. Well, I get to send off here to email. All right. So when you finish, when you finish. You can send it to my email, okay. and I will and I will look to see how well you have understood the lesson today. Okay. All right, so we're going to end now, but you're not going to lose anything. You will have this. This is the last screen, the last slide in the PowerPoint. Okay, so we're going to close it this time. I'll see you later. Hello. God bless. Hello. Uh, so okay, I finished then. my, I, hello? Oh, you finish. I finished doing mine, but I don't know your email so that I can send it through it. Okay, have you received any email from me? Oh, okay, I, 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 I got it. Okay, well, if you have received emails, <clears throat> sorry, if you have received emails from last week, Thursday, um, and also, let me see. Last week, Thursday, if you have received emails last week, Thursday, January 20, then that is my email. Okay, I, I remember that I received some uh, documents from you. All right, so you can use that. That is my email. Okay. I'll... All right, and I'll see what you have done. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you all.